Welcome back to Photoshop. So I've been working on a set of new actions and I came across some terminology inside of the action that I never really knew what it meant. So I looked it up and oh my gosh, it's the greatest thing that ever happened. My first Photoshop class was in 1992 when Photoshop just came out. Since then, I haven't had formal education in Photoshop. All this stuff I've learned on my own. So occasionally I come across something that I don't really know what it does, or I just don't use it enough to remember what it does. In this case, I had no idea, had to look it up, but it solves so many problems. And today I'm going to show you how to use this really cool variable to solve some issues with actions inside of Adobe Photoshop. thing that I wanted to announce before we start this video is I did create a new Facebook group for this channel. And the reason for this is really simple. A lot of times I get questions and they're difficult for me to answer because I can't see the issue. Sometimes people are unsure what the issue is or they're not very good at explaining it. And for me to either see the image or maybe a little video clip of the issue makes it really easy for me to help you out. Plus, you can post your images. I can take a look and tell you whether you're going in the right direction or the wrong direction. If you're interested in that Facebook group, I'm going to be having the link in the description from all the videos from now till when I decide to get rid of it. All right here. So I've got actions right here. If you don't have actions up, you would just go up here and click on actions and it will pop up just so you can see it. And so I've got a set of actions here. I'm going to create a new set. So I'm going to click right here on this little icon and we're going to create a new set and I'm going to call this amazing action. All right. So we're going to get a new set. It's called amazing action and we're going to put the actions inside of this. So what we're going to do is a saving action and I'm not going to tell you what the action is actually going to do. We're just going to go through and I'm going to show you what the issue is when you make an action. So we're just going to do a really simple saving action. The, the trick here isn't to show you how to do this. I have other videos on me doing actions and how to save, but we'll just do a real quick one. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go to new action and I'm going to call this 2000 P for 2000 pixels. Horizontal. Okay. We're not going to give it a color or anything like that. Cause we, we don't need to, cause I'm going to delete these after we're done. So we're going to go ahead and hit record. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flatten this. So when I do saving actions, I'm usually flattening this out just because you always need to sharpen this image layer and it just makes the whole process easier. So we're going to go layer, flatten image, and then I'm going to come over here to my size. So I'm going to go to image. Oops, wrong one. Image, image size. And we're going to make this 2000, like I said, so we've got 2000 pixels. We're going to go ahead and hit okay. We will sharpen this and I've got smart sharpen up. But we'll just come up here so you can see it. We've got sharpen, smart sharpen. We'll do 25. That's fine. Cause this image has actually already been sharpened and we're going to convert that image to sRGB cause this would be used on the web and I am in Adobe RGB. All right, cool. So that's that action. So let's go ahead and hit revert. This is going to bring this back to the normal thing. So I can click up here and I can run this action so I can click it. It runs. It works perfect on a horizontal image. The problem is when you get to a vertical image, it's going to make this dimension 2000. And this is going to be huge. We don't want that. There's a kind of fix to do this. So what you can do is right here under image size, you can come out and tick this little box right here. So I've ticked that box. So let's see what this does now that I've ticked this little box. So go up here, we'll hit revert. And we're going to run that action. And you can see when it comes to image size, it stops. And now I can, I can change this. So if I had a vertical image, I could make that 2000 pixels. Well, that's great, but I always have to constantly change that. There's no way 
to make it automatically recognize whether the image is horizontal or vertical and then apply the 2000 to the longest dimension like you can in Lightroom. It drives me nuts for years. I'm like, this is stupid. I always have to have two actions. Ha ha. We don't. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It's a little bit convoluted. I wish they would change some things and I'll mention those in a second here, but we're just going to go ahead and hit cancel. We don't need that image anymore. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new action. So we're going to go up here and we're going to call this one 2000 P vertical. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and hit record. So just as before, we're going to go to layer flatten image, image, image size, but this one, we're going to put it on the vertical side. So 2000 hit. Okay. We're going to go to sharpen, which we've already done. And we're going to go to edit, vert to profile, hit. Okay. Stop that action. Okay. Now I'm gonna come back up here to the image size and I'm going to uncheck that box because we don't want it to stop. Now I've got a vertical and a horizontal and we can test this out just to make sure it works. So we'll go up here to revert, click on the 2000 vertical, we'll hit play and boom, just like that. Yeah. It sizes it down perfect like that. So let's go back up here, hit revert. So now I'm going to show you how to get this to work. So the issue is you either have to click on this one and run it and this one run it, whether it's horizontal or vertical, it's not a huge issue. But if you ever want to run a batch action, it won't work because you can only do either horizontal or vertical images because it doesn't know whether the image is horizontal or vertical or can it. So here's where the new feature comes into. If you come up here and we come down, insert conditional. Think of it as a variable or an if then statement on a computer. So we're going to go ahead and click that. All right. In just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new action and we're going to call this one 2000 P horizontal slash vertical. And we're going to hit record, but we're not going to record anything. We're just going to go up here and we're going to insert that conditional. And it says, if the current image is a landscape, do this, which is the horizontal. So if it's landscape, we want you to play this action. If it's not a horizontal, play the vertical action. Okay. Stop. So now we have this universal action that will work both for horizontal and vertical because it's able to recognize whether it's in landscape mode or not. So let's go ahead and test it on this one. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. We're going to go up here. Image size, 2000 pixels vertical because it recognized that it was a vertical image. So we're going to hit OK. We'll come to this image. We're going to run the same action. Hit play. This one should have the horizontal is 2000 and bam, just like that. It works perfectly. All right. So you can see right here, this is my set. That's my amazing action set. And inside of it, we have to have three different actions, which is the part that I don't like. I have to create these two actions to create this one. And so basically I'm never going to be clicking on these. I'm only going to be clicking on this. So usually one of the things I do is I make that button a different color. I'll make these two black and maybe this one red or blue or a different color. So it's easier to recognize. However, I wish we could write just one action in which we do the if then statement. And if it's horizontal, it runs the horizontal action. And then inside of that same action, we had another action that it would run that second half of it as vertical. So, Hey, Adobe, that would be so much easier if we could just do one action and didn't have to have three actions to create this. But that is the really cool new trick that I learned inside of Adobe Photoshop to really solve a lot of problems. So right here, you can see I made some batch saving actions. Now, the reason I did this is I removed the save as part. So usually when I'm doing a saving action, I actually add the save as into it, or now it has to be save as a copy. But when you do a batch, I do the save as in the action part. So I just use the, the last thing I wanted to show you in here is we did use if it was a document, but the options that we have in here, if the document is square, if it's RGB, CMYK, grayscale, sRGB, 
And you can see there's a whole bunch of other variables that we could use to use this conditional of action effect inside of Adobe Photoshop. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.